Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is uh, Shubankar Basu. I'm from. I'm the product line manager for uh, leading edge technologies, primarily dealing with the 40 nanometer uh, and below nodes. Um, so today, uh, what I'm going to do is the next few minutes take you through what Global Foundry is um, is actually offering, delivering on 40 nanometer. Really, we do uh, 40 nanometer, but what are we delivering? And what's coming out of Fab 8, uh, some of the new announcements that have happened. We'll talk about IP collaboration and touch press on a few of the things and then questions. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll just proceed forward. So uh, one of the main thing is uh, recently, uh, I think many of you have uh, probably heard that Global Foundries entered into a strategic collaboration with Samsung Electronics. And uh, this uh, means uh, something that is game changing, as analysts have pointed out, as many of our customers have responded with, that this is really something, it's a great deal. Basically, it's a strategic collaboration that is uh, far beyond just uh, you know talking about um, but, you know selling something as a second source or this kind of a model. If you have followed the foundry landscape in general, uh, the, in the previous nodes until 28 nanometer, there was an observed trend of you know one source being a first source foundry, and everybody else trying to become a second source, sort of you know brute force or black box style of matching to the uh, you know the first source foundry. With this collaboration, that game is changing. So what we bring to the customer, our customers are mostly the fabulous design houses. Big thing that comes to their mind is assurance of supply. So if a single customer is trying to tape out the same GDS onto the two fabs, Samsung as well as uh, two companies rather, there are actually three production fabs between Samsung and Global Foundry shared. If a single customer with a single GDS tries to uh, tape out to both the fabs, today that is perfectly possible. It is unlike really doing a brute force style uh, matching. And what's the assurance of supply part is, uh, we have heard in the past about natural calamities affecting you know, uh, some fab closure or risks to some production in, uh, let's say, Taiwan or some other places, right? To just name a few, I just named one, but you know, there can be many other places, even the US. So today, uh, this, these fabs are spread across different continents, and uh, uh, two different continents, three fabs, that assurance of supply, peace of mind comes to the customer's mind. Um, the second thing is a choice and uh, design compatibility. We all know that uh, the cost of redesign, if really uh, you know, want to, somebody wants to design to two PDKs in two of the foundries, it is prohibitively expensive in terms of the design cost. By providing customers an opportunity to come up with the same design rules, same PDK, and having the same GDS taped out to two foundries and the assurance of supply, it's a huge reduction, millions of dollars of saving in the upfront design cost. So that's that's what is the strength of this collaboration, really being able to tape out a single GDS to two fabs using the same PDK, exactly synced up. Uh, the third thing, of course, is, uh, uh, is that, you know, actually we'll talk about that and maybe just move to the next slide. Uh, <coughs> so first thing, um, uh, first thing first, let me talk about our fab, Global Foundries fab in uh, New York. Now, uh, one of the, the flagship project, of course, from Global Foundry when it was formed as a spin-off from AMD in 2009, right? And then we acquired chartered semiconductors and uh, formed uh, today what is called the second largest, uh, uh, you know, foundry, a true uh, pure play foundry manufacturer in the world, right? So, and then we started uh, manufacturing or building our, uh, you know, Fab 8 facility in Saratoga Springs, New York. And... Um, uh, it's, it's moving full steam ahead since then. There had been uh, upward of um, you know, $15 billion pumped in. There are new investment planned uh, around the tone of $10 billion, most of which is going to go towards uh, preparing, readying, and ramping up uh, Fab 8 in New York for the 20 nanometer, 40 nanometer, and below nodes. And also, Im interesting to note, just from um, you know, the, the country's uh, strategic importance for this FAB perspective, the Global Foundry's FAB 8 in New York today employs um, uh, more than 2,500 employees. Um, by the end of this year, we are targeting around 3,000. And once our technology development center, which is the adjacent building, uh, adjacent, uh, building shown in the picture, we're going to employ somewhere around uh, 4,000 or so employees uh, in the near future, in, in some distant time. Yes, please. A uh, very good question. So um, I will address that question. Just keep it uh, on hold. Very key question. I'll take it forward. <clears throat> so uh, 
just getting back to the supply chain model, once, we, once again, what we are talking about today is a true fab sink. And unlike a design in the past in 28 nanometer or so, having a first source foundry and a second source, uh, you know, uh, second source suppliers trying to brute force in a black box fashion, trying to match up to the first source foundry, that model is dead with the FinFET era. It's extremely co co complex, it's cost prohibitive right now, uh, and we don't think that it works. So what we are doing, Global Foundry and Samsung in this process, is a ground up syncing up process. So we have started this uh, you know, the, throughout the last year. It's a, it comprises of syncing up at all levels, tools, processes, recipes, uh, calibration, you name it. And we have done a bottom-up approach to really sync up the two fa uh, fabs in a very copy-smart kind of an approach. And by doing that today, uh, we can safely say that it is, um, it is synced up in a way, and also uh, PDK, in a way that you know, a single design can comfortably go into uh, both the fabs, um, a single GDS2 can go into both the fabs. Uh, the, the, the third thing, of course, I already told you about the risk mitigation uh, through the, you know, the diversity that is provided through different geographic locations, right? We are talking about fabs in Korea for Samsung, we are talking about fab in New York and Austin. So these three production facilities offer that peace of mind uh, in the sense of uh, assurance of supply. So, let's move forward. The other, uh, other thing that I wanted to um, um, address is <coughs> What this collaboration also brings to the table is um, um, a very stronger tie with the ecosystem. And why is this so important? In, in the world of FinFET or any other leading age today, uh, having the right time to market is the most critical aspect, I guess. The number of design starts that we are seeing is happening with the different, different companies. Um, being able to provide the right solution at the right time is the key to success. That is what Global Foundry is recognized. And that's why let me come back to your question, ma'am, on the 14XM technology. Short answer is that 14XM was our homegrown Global Foundry's technology. As you might know, if you're familiar with, the, with Samsung, Global Foundry's, IBM, and so on, we go a long way in terms of the definition. We work jointly in what is the joint development uh, activity in New York. So part of our definition, uh, or most of our definitions are largely similar. We don't deviate from there, even XM and LPE and LPP, which are the current offerings, also are similar in that way. However, what we felt is that if we are actually collaborating with the same IP uh, or the same EDA vendors, working on three different flavors of the technology, we have one of the guys from Taiwan, we have Samsung and us three, it is basically diluting the priority of what the customers really want. The customers have spoken. We have heard them. They have said that we want the right technology, the right time frame to intercept their design need. Based on that requirement and also uh, the homegrown technology that Samsung has, the maturity level of that in their fab is something that was impressive for uh, global foundries to count on. And therefore, we, we did not abandon the 14 XN technology, but we you know, passed on all the learning. We are not growing it any farther. Instead, we have built the fab around 14 LP and LPP. So to simple answer is that our 40 nanometer technology offering would be only LPE and LPP going forward. Does that answer your question? Okay. So, uh, but this, this point, this slide is very key. By employing, first of all, you know, um, PDKs, models, and DMs at the right time, uh, having a true fab sync bottom up, and also employing or leveraging the silicon maturity that Samsung has already proven in their S1 fab in Korea, uh, we are able to provide our customers, Global Foundry's own customers, also the confidence that today they are dealing with a 1.0 quality PDK which has already been silicon qualified. It's no longer the question of chance, but it's the question of how we follow the execution path. It's no longer a question of a hope, the whether we can meet that maturity level. That's what we bring to the table. And that's why the collaboration with the EDA partners, that's why the collaboration with our IP partners and also the design services companies or the channel partners makes sense today. So we, have, we believe that we are in a much stronger position. Okay, um, I just wanted to uh, uh, you know, bring to light the key dates, and this is particular specific to Global Foundries, not uh, uh, the collaboration necessarily. So we are going to offer both the low power enhanced uh, 14 LPE version, which is the early version of 14 Fitware technology. Uh, for that, the 1.0 version of the PDK model and SPICE um, uh, model and DM are available today. And uh, in our own Fab 8, it's going to go into uh, risk production in the end of 2014. 
and uh, we are actually uh, volume ramping our first uh, lead products in uh, first quarter of 2015. So that's in terms of the technology, the first version of the 40 nanometer technology, which is LPE. The next one, which is of course the enhanced performance uh, version of the LPE technology, providing an upward of 14% plus uh, performance boost. And that's going to be uh, risk qualified in our fab um, in 2015. And <clears throat> once again, one thing I would say is that uh, remember, for global foundries, leveraging the silicon maturity that is happening already in the Samsung fab is a huge reference point for us. And therefore, it's no longer just a simple target to bring up a technology. Rather, we know what we are aiming for. And by doing that, we are very confident that you know, the schedule maturity and the plans that we have put forward to meet our end customer demands are going to be in place. As of now, the silicons are, silicon data is coming out of Fab 8 for the 14 LP technology. And in all aspects, we are beating the targets. This is, this is a good thing. Yeah. From, uh, from Fab 8, right? So I said that the production is uh, production ramp is happening in Q1 of 2015. Yes, ramp is happening there. Oh, you, you are talking about on the shelf? Uh, that is a slightly different thing. Foundries do not typically report that, only one of the companies, product companies report that. Uh, I might have checked that, but when you say ramp, that means that the, it's, it's already taped out, it has gone through the risk qualification and everything. You know, ramp is a volume ramp, right? So you are good in that term. So we, we just keep it there. Because we don't really do the last part of it, right? So it's the product companies who do that, typically. Okay, um, um, on, the, on the shuttles, so this is a very key message which I want this audience to take away, that on 14 LPE, we are, we are having multiple uh, MPW shuttle this year, and we encourage, you know, if you are a customer that has been uh, trying to employ uh, this technology, encourage you to ride on one of our shuttles, um, see the maturity of the technology, see what we are really talking about. This is uh, going to have uh, very interesting results. And um, our we have a comprehensive platform IFU definition, which we believe um, fits very well from the early uh, uh, requirements of, the, uh, of both the mobility uh, market as well as the high computing, uh, high performance computing market. So uh, our <coughs> IPs are fully uh, planned out and we believe that you know, it meets the end customer needs. All right, uh, just wanted to uh, throw some light on the overall technology generation of uh, global foundries. On the, we are uh, you know, manufacturing multiple products on 28 nanometer. Uh, of course, we have our different flavors. You might be familiar with the High Performance Plus, uh, generally catering to the high performance computing markets. You also have the super low power 28 SLP and the low cost um, 28 LPS for low power policy uh, process. These, all of these technologies are available now, so, um, and uh, if you're interested, please contact uh, Global Foundries on that. Of course, uh, this year, we, as I uh, mentioned, that you know, 14 LPE is going to be ready uh, for uh, our first product tape out is happening this year, and uh, 20 LPM, which is a previous generation, also provides. Uh, we all acknowledge that 20 LPM is a shorter note compared to, of course, the FinFET generation. However, it does provide quite a bit of advantage to the mobile application. So that is, we have multiple products stepping out in our fab, Fab 8, again in New York, on the 20 uh, nanometer node, and that's available fully for production this year. Um, going forward, of course, 20, 2015, we are going to see the enhanced performance version 14 LPP. And, um, and in our pipeline, we also have uh, the future nodes of 20 nanometer and on, okay? So, um, as a summary, what I would say is that, you know, um, with the 14 LPP and LPE uh, collaboration that we have, uh, strategic collaboration that we are having with Samsung, one thing that comes is uh, assurance of supply from geographically dispersed locations in different continents. Uh, <coughs> second thing is, in terms of our design start, customers can engage with us right now uh, on LPE, 1.0 version of PDK silicon qualified models are available today. Uh, we have also, uh, in uh, Samsung silicon qualified foundation IPs through Global Foundries are available today. And uh, we <coughs> obviously would expect uh, you know, further boost in performance from LPP, which would be risk qualified uh, next year. So Shabanka, that, did, did, you, did you talk about uh, the uh, adoption, market adoption for 14 nanometer FinFET? 
Yeah, Already. so okay. uh, not really, not much. But let me just talk about it, Sean. Thanks for the question. I think uh, this is a key thing. So what we are, with what you are seeing, first of all, let's differentiate between 40 nanometer and the previous generation of technology. The first thing that we are seeing is a huge gain in performance. The FinFET device in itself, right, because of its inherent 3D characteristics and the effective width, electrical width, provides a huge boost in the intrinsic performance of the device. Number one. Number two, uh, the additional benefits are, you know, the strong get control and lowering of uh, leakage current and so on. So, it is a sweet node when it comes to providing benefit to both the high performance needs as well as the low power needs. In terms of the market adoption today, uh, the way that you know devices are progressing at the end, applications are progressing, we definitely expect to see the high mobility, uh, high, high performance mobility, or even the medium performance uh, mobility players, even for the uh, you know the tablets of the world or the sm high end sa uh, smartphones, to uh, f start adopting the 40 nanometer FinFET first, and then of course we are going to see a lot more adoption in the uh, in the middle tier. So that's definitely true. Thanks, any sir. other uh, any other questions? So you talked about your alliance with Samsung on different fronts and how you are trying to build up a bottom-up uh, design approach or IP solution approach. Now my question is that in the industry there are already forums and standards which people adhere to so that they can talk to each other well. For example, talking between EDA and, ben EDA and Foundry, Foundry and IP designer or between design services. So my question is that what is the, what is the thing that you are gaining from Samsung or vice versa so that you are you're only picking Samsung out of the whole lot and <laughs> things like that. Okay. <laughs> Good question, but maybe just uh, let me clarify. First of all, it's not like we are shopping around. But when I'm talking about the collaboration, uh, yeah, there are models, of course, which exist. Every company is, uh, you know, collaborating with the IP vendors and everything. What we are, what I was really emphasizing on is that Samsung has homegrown this technology, which has already attained a certain silicon maturity level. We had three different flavors of the technology earlier. Remember, the same d uh, IP design houses, third-party IP companies, or the EDA houses were engaging to support all the vendors. Instead, when two of the top foundry players really join hands in providing the single technology, we can exploit the, or leverage on this, uh, you know, reducing the number of variants, providing uh, or leveraging on the silicon maturity level, and driving the ecosystem partners towards working on one strong technology offering and design enablement offering instead of really getting confused on it. So that, was, that is the reason why and why Samsung has much more um, obviously because of uh, it, this is a leadership position in terms of technology, uh, foundry offering of 40 nanofin FinFET. Any other question? That's it, I think. Right. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much.